Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 29th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Today we got an amazingly simple exploit in OS X that will get you root access. Turns out that OS X does ship without a root password being set for the operating system. At first sight this may not be a big problem because the root account is disabled so you cannot actually directly log in using root. However, you can still use root credentials to authenticate yourself as an administrator when you're adjusting system preferences. So for example, if you are going to the system preference dialog, then you're trying to unlock one of the options. Typically you get a pop-up box, it's pre-populated with your current username as a username and you enter your own password. But as an alternative, you can also just enter root as a username, leave the password empty, and then in my experience, click the unlock key twice. First time won't work, but second time you click it, it will work and will give you access to change these security preferences. I tried it with a couple of the preferences and it worked like a charm. Now, I haven't tested all and every single one of them. The quick fix here is to actually set a password for root. Now, this is done pretty easily. Just use sudo password, where password is abbreviated P-A-S-S-W-D, and uh, enter a new password. Take a good password here, of course, because once you do actually set a password, the root account becomes enabled and can be used to log in. Apple stated that they are working on a fix for this issue and does recommend that for now you should be changing your password. Now I will add a link to the respective page at Apple's support website to the show notes. One of the more scary up and coming technologies that you may have heard of is the use of pictures posted, for example, to social media for facial recognition. So essentially, this technology promises to be able to identify individuals based on pictures posted to social media. Quite often, people who are somewhat concerned about their privacy will blur these pictures. Well, there is now an interesting paper looking at some of these facial recognition algorithms. And what they actually found is that blurring the image may not do much good. Some of these algorithms are really good in identifying individuals, even if the picture is blurred to the point where you yourself would not recognize the face anymore. However, they are proposing and they have developed a different technology. The interesting part here is that you as a human probably are still going to recognize the individual, but artificial intelligence algorithms as they're used right now are no longer able to do so. What this algorithm does is it looks at the original picture, does identify the markers that are usually used by these algorithms to identify a face, and then specifically distorts and changes the image in these spots that are used as markers. So just these markers essentially are now misplaced, and with that, the image is no longer recognized by these algorithms. But these changes are not substantial enough to actually cause the human to no longer recognize the image. So the end effect is that your friends will still recognize the image of you that you do post to social media, but the machines will not. This technique, of course, could have some interesting implications for CAPTCHAs as well, because algorithms that are breaking CAPTCHAs are often very similar to these artificial intelligence algorithms being used for facial recognition. And if you downloaded the official Bitcoin Gold wallet between November 21st and 25th, be aware that you may have downloaded a malicious version. Apparently what happened was that at some point within this time frame, the official installer file was replaced. Not really clear what the purpose of the replaced file was, whether it was benign or whether it was malicious, but the authors have really no idea what file it was. 
the signature did not match. And as a result, they're recommending that you remove that file as quickly as possible. If you did expose any cryptocurrencies to that wallet, then make sure you're moving that cryptocurrencies to a new wallet with a new address in order to prevent any leaked addresses from being abused. And a collaboration between the Yale Privacy Lab and Exodus Privacy took a look at many popular Android applications to see if they're using any trackers. Well, they identified 44 different trackers in 300 popular Android apps and published a report and a website that lists all of the different apps and the various trackers that they found. These trackers essentially do monitor user behavior as the user uses the app and looking at the reports for individual apps it allows you to figure out what particular data was leaked by that application often the user is not informed properly about this privacy issue and the application does exfiltrate the data without user consent well that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again Tomorrow, bye.